crazy that an assist record that stood for a few years before Matt Zuccarello broke it could go so unnoticed. That's what happens when Kirill Kaprizov's your teammate, I guess. We take a look at Matt Zuccarello and what we can expect from him in 2022-2023 today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked on Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we discuss season expectations for Matt Zuccarello heading into 2022-2023. We look at his career season with the Wild last year and what we can expect from a stats perspective for him this season. Thank you for tuning into today's episode. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams and now guiding you through the offseason here on Locked on Wild. Matt Zuccarello, in many ways, a odd line mate combo for uh, Kirill Kaprizov because of just how his wild tenure started when he first came here, but uh, boy, after the season that he just had and the chemistry that uh, he has developed with Kirill Kaprizov, it is, uh, it's wild to see just how inseparable these two have become uh, since they really got comfortable early last season uh, being line mates together. Uh, Zuccarello this past season, career high for him in points, career high in assists, Couple, a uh, couple of goals shy of his career high in goals, and uh, some interesting things. If we look at Zuccarello from a stats perspective last season, so had the twenty-four goals, the fifty-five assists. He also had twenty-one power play points on the season. Uh, so obviously, a huge focal point of the uh, the power play, with what him and uh, Kirill do in five on five. No shock that they were also able to uh, to have some success there as well. Uh, interesting to note that this is the second time in his career that he has gone over the 20 goals mark. He nearly did back in 2013, 2014, but uh, it's not really even near the top of the list in terms of shots. And so uh, not shooting as much, but still scoring at uh, one of the highest rates of his career. And if not for that injury that injured, uh, that ended his season, um, the fracture in his leg and uh, also uh, a core injury, if not for that, he very likely could have set career highs across the board with how he was playing down the stretch. It was a little bit of a slow start for Zuccarello uh, and for that top line in general, because if you'll recall, it was initially Jewel Erickson Eck who was centering that uh, that line with Kaprizov and Zuccarello. Didn't work out the best, and so uh, enter Ryan Hartman, and then that's when that line really took off and uh, went nuts. In fact, if you look at it, uh, for Zuccarello, he was around a point per game through October, November, and December. After that, he was well more than that. 16 points in 10 January games, 13 points in 9 February games, 14 points in 15 March games, and 12 points in 12 April games. And so uh, once that line started to take over, Zuccarello certainly a big part of that. Now, Zuccarello in and of himself, his numbers have been pretty good. Uh, Throughout the course of his career, obviously, with the New York Rangers, was between a 50 and 60 point player with anywhere between 15 and 19 goals per season. Uh, It took a little while for him to kind of get comfortable with the Wilds. His first season with them was uh, okay. 
And, um, you know, then since Kaprizov has uh, kind of been his go-to line mate, uh, his numbers have really taken off. Uh, and then some. The biggest thing for him is going to be going into this season, can he do it again? And we'll talk about statistically what the odds are of him continuing to uh, have this type of scoring that he had last year and carrying that for forward, getting up there in age. He's 35 now heading into the season. And again, coming off of the surgeries, the core surgery, and also uh, fixing the fractures in his leg. Frankly, I don't know how he was able to play through those, but it does, you know, it does point to some of that lack of production that hampered the Wilds uh, in the playoffs, despite Kirill Kaprizov's best efforts against the St. Louis Blues. And so for Zuccarello, much like Ryan Hartman, much like Marcus Foligno, the question just becomes, can he do it again? And is he is this the type of player that he is? Or uh, is he going to, you know, kind of settle back to where he was with the New York Rangers? Uh, but a very important part of uh, what this team has done over the last few years. And so obviously, you know, him fully healthy is a dangerous, dangerous player for this uh, Minnesota Wild team as that top line, especially with going into the season, there being more of a focus on this line until that boldy line with Rossi and whoever else ends up being the third component of that line, until they can pick things up themselves, that top line is going to be the absolute focal point for this team offensively. And so if Zuccarello can repeat his performance of this past season, that's going to go a long way to uh, help this wild team, especially early in the season, uh, score some goals. Now, how many goals per se? Well, we'll look at what these stats projections say for Matt Zuccarello and uh, what we can expect from him in 2022-2023 as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all the latest football league developments, plus game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's full slate of NFL and college football games. BetOnline.net is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head over to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find all that and more at Bet Online, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen today, make sure to check out the Locked On NHL podcast to get a full lowdown on everything going on as we gear up for the start of the season. Locked On NHL is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. What do we think stats-wise is possible for Matt Zuccarello this season? We once again will turn to ESPN Fantasy Hockey just to get an idea of what they're expecting from a stats perspective for Zuccarello. So let's take a look at uh, what they have in mind. The 2023 outlook, you would be hard pressed to find a player who exceeded expectations as much as Zuccarello a season ago. After two mediocre years in Minnesota, which saw him post 26 goals and 72 points in 107 games, Zuccarello improved those totals to 24 goals and 79 points in just 70 games last season. The main reason for the increased production was Zuccarello's 28 power play points, 10 more than he had in any other campaign. The Norwegian will be 35 by the time next season begins, and he also had core muscle surgery and dealt with a fractured leg this offseason. He's expected to be ready for camp, but don't pay for a performance that will be nearly impossible to repeat. Is it impossible for Zuccarello to repeat his performance from this uh, past season? So let's look at some of the factors. Number one, 
And uh, this was one of the big ones for Ryan Hartman was a shooting percentage was more of an outlier. You know, obviously, I, th- I think Hartman ended up shooting something around 14 percent, which was higher than any of his previous seasons and his career average. So you'd assume that there is maybe going to be a little bit of an adjustment there. For Zuccarello, though, you look at his previous other seasons and he's had seasons before. For instance, if you go back to 2015-2016, when he scored what is still his career high in goals with 26, he had uh, 166 shots in 81 games and shot 15.7% for the Rangers that season. So shot 15% then. In 2019-2020, he had 15 goals in 65 games, 96 shots, shot 15.6% there. This past season, uh, 2020, 2021, that is, 11 goals in 42 games, shot 14.9% on 74 shots. And then this past year, 159 shots, he shot 15.1% in this past season. So it's not as though shooting percentage wise, it's not like he had a huge bump in his, uh, his goals that were going in. So we can probably eliminate that one because it seems like as he gets older, obviously being more selective and not taking as many shot opportunities, but when he does shoot, he's capitalizing on it by scoring goals. So we can probably eliminate that one from factors as to why he won't repeat what he did this past season. Uh, The only other one that you can really look at is from the injury perspective. In 2019-2020, Zuccarello played in 65 games. I believe the uh, total that season was 69. Uh, Two years ago, he played in a total of uh, 42 games. The, uh, The total then was 56. And then this last season, 70 games out of a possible 82. So... Throughout the course of his career, Zuccarello has uh, been someone who has been banged up um, to the point where it is possible that he misses some time due to injuries, but there's no way to really forecast that. So the hope is that he can stay relatively healthy because as we saw down the stretch with those injuries he was dealing with, it just it it may it turned him into a different player. Um against the uh, the St. Louis Blues in the postseason. So hopefully he can avoid any major injuries. The other note, and this is the one uh, such as we talked about with uh, Ryan Hartman, is just the Kirill Kaprizov factor does play a part in the production of these two guys. Uh, this interesting note from uh, a story all the way back in April from the uh, Star Tribune by Sarah McClellan. Uh, but just found it interesting just to kind of undertone just how much Kaprizov and Zuccarello, how much their chemistry has grown. Of the 35 goals that Matt Zuccarello has scored since Kaprizov joined the Wild, because keep in mind, there was one season before Kaprizov joined the team in 2019-2020. So throw that out. But of the 35 goals that Zuccarello has scored since Kaprizov has joined the wild Kaprizov has assisted on 21 of those 35 goals and Matt Zuccarello has assisted on 33 of Kirill Kaprizov's 40 uh, 74 career goals so and you know you you would expect that with somebody who is a primary line mate with Kirill and likewise Zuccarello having Kirill as a teammate But Kirill brings a level of scoring opportunities that your average player doesn't. If it was a step lower on the totem pole for a left winger who was Matt Zuccarello's line mate, his production would drop because Kaprizov is able to see things that your average players just don't. And so as a result, that leads to a lot more opportunities. And much like Ryan Hartman, Zuccarello is perfectly capable of 
putting those opportunities in the net. And so while, yes, it's probably not likely that Zuccarello and Hartman produce at the exact same level next season, I would be shocked if they don't produce at a similar level just because of having a guy like Kirill Kaprizov on the line with them, being the number one line for this team, they're the ones that are going out there in crunch time situations. And so they're the line that's going to be the one scoring the goals for this squad uh, at any given point during a game. So yes, it's probably not likely for an 80 point or 79 point campaign for Zuccarello. ESPN, for what it's worth, is factoring uh, Zuccarello to 66 games this year, 19 goals, 41 assists, so an even 60 points uh, for Zuccarello and uh, 22 points on the power play. So expecting there to be a similar level of power play production for Zuccarello, just not as much five-on-five production. And another factor that would weigh in is the additional attention that the top line is going to be given, at least until the Boldy line um, solidifies themselves as a capable scoring line. That was the thing with having Kevin Fiala and Matt Boldy together on that second line was that you had to pick your poison. And once teams started to really go for the Boldy line to try to slow them down, the Kaprizov line took right over. And right now there just isn't that second line scoring threat for this team. So until the Wilds can show that they have a couple of lines that can beat you uh, by scoring goals at will, uh, there's going to be a little more attention that's paid to the uh, the Kaprizov line. So it it I'm not surprised that uh, the forecast is for a little lower in the Zuccarello points category. I just don't know if it's going to be as low as uh, is forecasted, uh, courtesy of ESPN Fantasy. But we'll see what happens. Um, a lot of factors at play. And uh, from a factors perspective from a storylines perspective there's plenty to follow for Zuccarello and so we'll look at the top storylines to watch surrounding Matt Zuccarello as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild once again thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day for your second listen today make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast which is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. So big storylines heading into the season for Matt Zuccarello. Well, obviously, first and foremost is going to be, is he fully healthy heading into the season? Core surgery and uh, surgery to repair a fractured leg. Obviously, there's a a lot of healing time required uh, for both of those operations. and so. Hopefully, Zuccarello is able to fully heal up because it was interesting last year. You know, you had a little bit of a slow start from a goal perspective for Kirill Kaprizov. You saw Ryan Hartman fill in to kind of uh, step in to kind of fill that void. And if Kaprizov starts on a normal pace for him, uh, then you know, we're going to see more even balanced scoring from this team uh, than we did to start the year. But I, I haven't haven't heard anything in regards to Zuccarello, so you have to assume that he is going to be healthy heading into the year. Um, and if not, that's going to uh, lead to some lineup juggling that could impact that first line's ability to uh, to play with that chemistry that just dominated teams this past season. Another one to look at for Zuccarello. We talked about this with Hartman as well. And yes, he is signed through this season and next season, but with this team heading in the direction that they're heading, which is leaning towards more youth and uh, giving those younger players an opportunity to uh, get some seasoning at the NHL level. What is going to happen once Zuccarello's contract is up? Is he going to be re-signed at a lower rate? 
or will the team opt for younger players uh, to fill his spot? Would you get to a situation where if Marco Rossi and Matt Boldy have great chemistry together, that you move them up to play with Kirill Kaprizov maybe two years from now? Maybe. Uh, the point being is that there are going to be a lot of options for this wild team to fill uh, from within, as opposed to having to try to go out and sign free agents. And with the chemistry that this team has built, obviously the number one preference is going to be to try to retain some of these guys as much as they can. But, you know, with the, with the fact that Zuccarello has missed time due to injury over the, uh, the last few years, you wonder if Bill Guerin just opts to move on once this current contract is done, um, it, it will depend. If he shows that he can build off of this past season and can be productive here this year, maybe you give him another couple of years to uh, to stick around and just continue to be that preferred line mate for Kirill Kaprizov um, as, as that top line option. If he's not, like if he if he struggles or can't stay healthy, well, it probably trends more towards the other one, which is just moving on and finding somebody else on that top line. But as with Ryan Hartman, I feel like it's a big season for Matt Zuccarello because even though the decision does not have to be immediately made as to what to do, the buyouts are now going to, you know, this year, two more years after that, the buyouts will be a heavy factor into how many of these players that are on the current roster get extensions or are just replaced internally. And the hope is that the Wild have some good options that could step up to be top liners. I mean, you've got one on that second line if you want to just consolidate it to go Kaprizov, Boldy, and if Marco Rossi can handle it, have him be the top center. It gives you a lot of options, which is uh, intriguing to look at down the stretch. But again, biggest factors for Zuccarello. Can he repeat? Maybe not an identical type of season that he had this past year, but at similar production. Can he be fully healthy once the season is ready to begin? And if he plays well, does he factor into the long-term or longer-term plans for this team or is he uh, going to play out the string and then uh, head elsewhere it, you look at it too he will be by the time his new deal would uh, kick into place 2024 20, 2025 he would be 37 heading into that season so it would be a it'd be a tricky call for Bill Guerin to make uh, but, you know, when teams, when teams opt for the youth, a lot of times they make all of those types of decisions and go with the younger option. So it's, it's a little early. Like I said, it's a little early to wait, uh, worry about that. But at the same time, it is something that will be in the back of my head, just seeing how things go for Zuccarello this year uh, as for how that will factor into Future planning. We like to do a lot of future planning on this show. Um, just trying to keep the chairs filled and, and seeing who will fill when spots open up. So all in all, expecting some good things from Matt Zuccarello here this season. Uh, as we have done over our past couple of videos, you'll notice we've got a uh, pinned comment asking if you think Matt Zuccarello will approach the same levels of, uh, of production that he had this past season in 2022-2023. So let us know what you think. Leave your comment, and uh, we will see how people think Zuccarello will do here this season. That is going to wrap it up for today's episode of Locked on Wild. So again, now that your first listen is done, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast to get a full lowdown on all the big off-season questions heading into the start of the season. We will continue to keep an eye on uh, plenty of wild topics here as the offseason draws to a close. 
We'll also get you a little bit of a recap of the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase later this week. So stay tuned for all of that. Continued player expectations. We've also got a uh, season preview dropping uh, later this week as well with uh, Bally Sports North, Kevin Gorg. So uh, stay tuned for that on Thursday and plenty of other episodes throughout the week as well. We are keeping you as fully up to date as possible. So make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow on your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on anything wild related between now and the season opener. Locked on Wild is keeping you up to date with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.